Welcome to another episode of Your Favorite Libertarian. I'm particularly psyched out of my mind about this one. This is going to be the first part of a series for this guy right here. This is an air precision build that I'm working on, and I use the term build very loosely. This first video is going to be on the upper, then we'll have a video on the lower once that comes in. Then I'll probably have a video of it all put together so you can see how it all looks together, how it fits, uh, looks, any accessories that I have on at that point. Then we'll do a range sesh so you can get an idea of how it shoots. Make sure, we'll make sure it doesn't blow up. Uh, that's important for it not to do that as far as uh, durability and reliability goes. And this will be an ongoing series. So as I make modifications to it, as I add accessories, optics, etc. That will all be in this series, and I'll create a playlist for it as well. Here's what you'll get in this series. You'll get a brief overview of all the parts that I've selected for this build. Lots of unboxing. I'll have a lot of boxes to unbox. Do you want to know what the pricing is for all the stuff? I'll tell you. Want to see some sweet range footage? You got it. Get my non-expert opinion on what I think of all the stuff. Plus, I mean, come on, you get to watch videos of a super cool gun. Are you ready? Here we go! And now it's time to play everyone's favorite game, What's in the Box? Let's get started, shall we? Start with the charging handle. This is $20, just a basic AR-15 M4 charging handle. Nothing crazy. We'll get this one out of the way. Comes with the sticker. Looks pretty good. I've already opened this up and looked at it. Nice and springy. Looks like it should work just fine. Moving on. This t-shirt, by the way, before I cover it up too much, it says find your freedom, air precision, it's topographical, and it's got the arrow logo on there. Here's the skew if you want to know. It's a Topo Freedom shirt, black and large. There's the skew. Next we have the Bolt Carrier Group. This is the 556 Carrier Group. It's black nitrite. Tell you a little bit about it before we open it up. This carrier features M16 cut carrier machine from 8620 steel, properly staked gas key, forward assist serrations, bolt features. You get the phosphate, it's machine from C158 steel. If you get the black nitrate or the nickel boron, it is machined from 9310 steel. All of them are HPT tested, MPI marked, shot peened. It includes the bolt carrier, the bolt assembly, firing pin, firing retaining pin, gas key, and cam pin, and all parts are installed. There's the SKU if you want to look that up on the website. This one is the non-logoed version because the logoed version was out of stock. Well, got another sticker. Sticker collection. Here she is. Your bolt carrier group. This is nitrite. Good way to tell it's nitrite and not phosphate is that it is shiny. Well, that stake and looks pretty good. Check out my bolt face. All right, upon initial inspection with uh, no expertise in bolt carrier groups, it looks good to me. I'll put all the specs below for you so you can check that out and read those. But I wanted to go old school on this one. Everything's already installed. It's a complete upper. It does not include the bolt carrier group or the charging handle, so I had to buy those separately. Just this by itself assembled is $319 on their website right now. Comes with the dust cover, forward assist. MOE handguard, A2 front sight, birdcage. That's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and put it together. For you completists out there. Bam. As you know, I'm still waiting on my lower to complete this, but before I even do that, I want to put a light on it. <laughs> That's how adamant I am about having a light on every long gun and handgun that you own, because bad stuff typically happens at night. So I've got my TLR1HL 
full review on this one, full comparison as well on this one compared to the Surefire offering. I have not yet gotten my hands on the new mod light, but two of my friends have ordered it. One actually received his today. So I might be able to borrow his to give you a review on that one as well. Uh, but for right now, I'm using my TLR1HL. This is not on any handgun because my Glock 19 has been sold and I'm in the process of figuring out what I want to get for my new that sized handgun of choice. So we have a couple different rail options. I have an all plastic Magpul rail that is M-Lock, so I can just put it on like so. Or I have a shorter aluminum Magpul M-Lock rail. These are both Magpul branded. This one's aluminum, available on Magpul site and probably a bunch of other places. This one is also Magpul branded and is polymer. So I ended up going with the 45 degree. Uh, this one, just put it in a weird spot. Having it like this, uh, you're putting your thumb in a, just a really awkward position, at least for me. Maybe that works for you, that's great. This is not my ultimate solution though. I prefer to have something that's kind of like that, pushes it out further. That would be great. Magpul makes one, T-Rex Arms makes one, but it kind of goes up and around a suppressor, so I don't really want to push it out anymore. Arasaka, I think, makes one, so I'll figure out what works, and I'll let you guys know. I'll give you an update video. But for right now, just based on the parts that I have lying around, I'm going to go with this 45-degree angle offset Picatinny rail, and that kind of puts it... right there, so as I'm pushing down, like you would a pressure pad, it'll be constant on. So it's accessible at least. It's closer to where a pressure pad would be or pushing in a button right here. So it's not too bad, but it does put the light a little bit further back than I'd like it. So I'll be shopping around. But in the meantime, this will work. A couple things to note when installing this, make sure that you have the nuts that are kind of rectangular. They're supposed to do a 90 degree turn and then start tightening on the back end of these holes. So you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough slack because otherwise you're just gonna have it get caught in this hole and you're gonna be tightening to nothing and then you'll just be able to rip them right out. Because this handguard is a bit thicker than a metal handguard would be, you have to uh, do a little bit more adjustment than just taking it off of one metal rail and putting it on another. Also, this right now has the Glock adapter on it for the rail. You'll wanna remove that and put on the 1913 Picatinny rail adapter for your TLR 1HL, so that way it'll have a nice snug fit front and back on this rail. Before ordering this completed upper, I wanted to know more about the barrel, so I asked the folks at Aero Precision, and this was their response. This barrel features a one in seven twist rate. Our CMV barrels are crafted to mil spec standards from 4150 chrome molly vandium. Our barrels are QPC coated, which stands for quench, polish, then quench again, to ensure the entire barrel is coated. It's a salt bath nitride, which provides for a longer barrel life than chrome line. The barrel extensions are installed, but not torqued to spec until after the QPC process is complete, to ensure the extension will not come loose. The QPC process has shown to have much better resistance to throat erosion than chrome lining, without affecting accuracy. Please note that our barrels are manufactured by our sister company, Ballistic Advantage, and they guarantee a sub MOA accuracy with match grade ammunition. So those are the answers I got from the questions I had on this particular barrel. I thought they were pretty good answers. What did you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I personally am very interested to see if I can get that sub MOA accuracy from this 10 and a half inch barrel. Ballistic Advantage makes really good barrels, but in the range time, I won't exactly be using match grade ammunition. I'll be probably using Wolf Gold 55 grain, which now is like unobtainium because of all the Russian ammo ban stuff going on, potentially, maybe. It's kind of kind of gray on that. And I'll also be running Crappy White Box Winchester 62 grain green tip, just to get an idea of how that works with the 1 and 7 twist. But definitely not match grade ammunition, so stay tuned for that range session because it's going to be an interesting one. Not only will I be trying to shoot really far out, probably all the way out to 200 yards with this barrel, but I'll also be testing out an optic that will be in a future review 
I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will tell you it's five power and it has a ACSS Aurora reticle. Think about it. Those are some pretty good clues. So in review, if you wanted to order this exact upper minus the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, the model would be the Air 15 Complete Upper 10.5556 Carbine Barrel with Pinned Front Sight Block or FSB MOE MLOC Carbine Handguard Model. All right, my commenters, I'm talking to you. This is your homework assignment. Let me know a couple things on this upper specifically uh, that I should do. For moving this light further up, closer to the muzzle and closer to the rail, should I do an Arasaka? Should I do a T-Rex arm? Should I do a Magpul? Which model should I get? Are there any other models that I'm leaving out that would be really good for this application? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, for my rear sight, I have a couple ideas, but let me know what you think, and let me know if there's something else that you thought of that I didn't think of yet. This is the old school type build, so I've already got the fixed front sight block uh, sight over here. I'm thinking maybe to get a carry handle rear sight, which, I mean, come on. Who, who wouldn't want to see that? You know you want to see it. You know you want to see it in the AR pistol specifically. But if it's not that, um, maybe a fixed rear sight from Daniel Defense or a flip down rear sight from Arrow, so then it's an all Arrow build. Also, the carry handle sight would probably be from Arrow as well because from what I hear, they make really good uh, carry handle sights. But let me know if there's something else you think would be good on this. And I may or may not migrate my red dot from my BCM build to this because I'll be getting an even better red dot for that, which will also be a review. Also, I'll have another optic that will be on here for sighting in and testing out the barrel. There's a lot of good stuff coming, so make sure that you subscribe, stay tuned for all of the new cool things that are coming your way on your favorite Libertarians channel. Well, that's going to do it for me and the first portion of this series, which is on the Aero Precision 10.5 upper. If you like this video, please like it. That helps a lot. If you could share this video, that helps a lot as well. And probably the best thing that you can do for my channel is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Then you're notified every week when I come up with a new video. I am doing this in a series. So again, this is the upper portion of the series. I'll be doing a lower portion of the series next and so on and so forth. More and more awesome stuff to come. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay free 